All right, everyone, we are going to go ahead and get started with the webinar for this month. We've got Coach Katie Joe and Coach Jake with us today to talk about some sugar. So I'll just go ahead and pass it on to them and let them get started. Thank you, Shelby. Do you want to start with our first slide here? Um, so why are we doing a webinar on sugar today? Um, for a few reasons. Uh, sugar today is way over consumed and has major negative impacts on our health. Um, since November is Diabetes Awareness Month, we figured it was a perfect time to present on sugar. Um, more on that connection here on our next slide. Um, diabetes is also a huge problem in our country today. The CDC predicts that one in three people will be diabetic by 2050. Um, and so there are several different types of diabetes, but for the sake of our webinar today, we'll be referring specifically to type 2 diabetes, which is by far the most common type and is not only preventable, but can even be reversed. So as far as what we hope that you get out of this webinar today, we want to help you understand why sugar is so harmful to our health and help you realize how much you may be consuming without intending to. So sugar and diabetes, what's the connection there? Um, consuming too many simple carbohydrates particularly sugar, is one of the biggest risk factors for developing type 2 diabetes. Um, and that is because of something called insulin resistance. Um, so I have these photos here to help explain what that is. So when we eat a carbohydrate, our body breaks it down into sugar. After we digest it, it gets sent to the bloodstream. Um, so glucose, sugar, those words can be used interchangeably here. So from our bloodstream, the sugar or glucose needs to get into our cell, um, where the cell will use it for energy. But in order to get into the cell, um, we need a hormone produced by our pancreas called insulin to allow that um, glucose from the bloodstream into the cell. Okay, so the insulin acts like a key, basically, to unlock the cell and allow the blood the sugar in the blood into the cell. Um, so those two photos there on the left is what is supposed to happen. That's what happens in a normal cell. Um, what can happen when we start consuming too much sugar, or too many simple carbohydrates, um, is something called insulin resistance, um, which is this third picture on the right here. So when that happens, um, Jake likes to compare this to a car engine. Um, with time, with a lot of wear, the engine will start to break down, and that is what can happen to our bodies as well. Um, when we're consuming too much sugar, um, our pancreas might not be able to keep up and may not be able to produce enough insulin, or our cells may stop responding to that insulin. And so the glucose then will stay in our bloodstream rather than getting into the cell. And so with the insulin resistance, that is when um, type 2 diabetes can develop. So um, sugar not only affects our blood sugar and our diabetes risk, but it impacts our health in a handful of other ways. Um, so Jake now is going to dive into those other reasons. Absolutely. So why do we care? Why do we care if there's a lot of extra glucose floating around in our body? Um, everything listed here is just a couple of things on how this can impact our health. Sugar is, is nasty stuff when we have way too much of it. Uh, Kitty Jo did use my favorite analogy of it being like a car. So when things stop working as well, we're not taking care of it, we're not doing what we're supposed to do, it's not able to work as well. What happens when we have too much glucose floating around in our blood? A good analogy or a good way to look at it or to picture it is view or imagine shards of glass floating around in your bloodstream, okay? So as we get farther away from our heart, blood vessels get much smaller. Blood vessels get thinner and smaller. Uh, think about your extremities, okay? Also, think about how small blood vessels are in your brain, uh, in your eyes, etc. So think about a shard of glass floating through your cardiovascular cardiovascular system and it's going to cause a couple nicks and scratches as it comes along and that's what happens when we have a lot of it. It causes a lot of damage. So go ahead and imagine what happens if we get a little scratch or cut on our arm. It gets a little inflamed, it gets a little red, it gets a little swollen. On our arm that might not seem like that big of a deal as it scars when it tries to repair itself. However, 
when that happens in our body when we don't have much room and other things are trying to go on in there it can cause some issues so um, sugar is very addicting but also at high levels it can be very damaging in the sense of long-term uh, long-term issues uh, our cardiovascular system I just discussed it nicks and scratches it causes uh, your body to produce more cholesterol. That is something I'll talk about on the next slide. Uh, liver. So uh, Katie Joe did a good job explaining what happens in the body. What, 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 how does your body react to it? That stuff, um, a, a part of sugar that gets broken down to is also fruit. Fructose is stored and when we have insulin that gets released, it eventually gets produces a lot of fat. And this is where we get non-alcohol fatty liver disease. Um, inflammation, so inflammation, which is what I just discussed, if you have a lot of that in your blood vessels, it's going to cause some long-term issues. And inflammation is one of the root causes of a lot of diseases and a lot of issues. Gut health, okay, so when you eat a lot of unhealthy foods, when you consume a lot of these foods uh, that are very high in sugar and they're very processed, you're promoting the growth of bacteria in your body, in your gut, specifically gut flora. Uh, that does not function as well and it's not ideal for our body. Um, teeth. A real good study uh, in 2014 found that sugar is the only cause of tooth decay and I thought that was a, a pretty good uh, 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 study to have in there just to, to its severity towards our teeth which we're all very focused on. Um, Mood swings. So we've all heard of the rise and the crash, okay? Uh, Kitty Joe talked about uh, insulin being released. When we have, uh, when we consume, let's say, a soda where it's a lot of sugar, well, all of a sudden what happens is your body releases insulin, and insulin does a good job, almost too good of a job, taking and getting rid of sugar from your bloodstream. Well, when that happens, all of a sudden we have a crash. It almost does too good of a job, and that's where a lot of those nasty mood swings come from. All right, so why, what's our motivation to do this? If it doesn't come from just overall health, let's talk about our screenings with Health Check 360. The sugar impacts almost all of them. These are a couple of the big ones. So I discussed earlier that uh, your body releases fat as an end result of consuming too much sugar. Well, that's obviously going to have a big impact on our weight. So BMI, that our, how much we weigh, it can drastically um, affect that weight circumference and waist to hip ratio. We know our body likes to store a lot of fat in that midsection, so it's going to have a big impact there. If your body's having issues keeping up and it's struggling to keep the glucose levels down, clearly that's going to impact your glucose reading on our, on our report. I real quickly to discuss cholesterol, um, it has, sugar has a massive effect on your cholesterol and how so? So, Cholesterol, specifically LDLs and HDLs, are really, they're, they serve a purpose to fix things, okay? So when we have a lot of cholesterol in our body, it's saying our body's trying to fix things. So when we have a lot of inflammation, if we have a lot of damage in our body because we're consuming a lot of sugar, it can drastically uh, hurt your LDLs and HDLs. So it'll cause your LDLs to go up and it could cause your HDL to go down. Triglycerides, again, I'm saying this a couple times, uh, when you release insulin, when your body releases it, it gets turned to fat in the liver. So triglycerides get impacted pretty much, uh, the biggest impact is carbohydrates and sugar being a carbohydrate. So that's just a couple quick things. I tried to go through that quickly, um, and that's a uh, way it impacts our health. Um, Katie Jo? If you want to switch back to that previous slide, just something um, to explain. Those numbers listed next to each biometric is the number of available points that you can score on your Health Check 360 screening. So, for example, your BMI is worth a total out of 100 points. So, if we add up all of those points with the biometrics that sugar can directly in affect, 64 out of 100 points on your screening. Good, um, good. Okay, next slide. Um, so now hopefully you have a, a better understanding of why sugar is so such um, 
have such a negative impact on our health. And it's not just the diabetes risk, but it impacts all those other areas as well. Um, but so now we're going to move more into discussing how easy it is to overconsume sugar. A lot of us are eating way too much without even realizing it. Um, so of course there are multiple reasons for that, um, but these are a few that we want to bring to light today. Um, so first point, sugar is added to nearly 80% of foods available at the grocery store today. Okay, so we're not just talking about the obvious things like soda and desserts and candy anymore. It's added to things like spaghetti sauce, ketchup, cereal, granola, yogurt, um, things that are supposed to be healthy choices have sugar added to them a lot of the time. Um, and there are a couple of reasons for that. Um, sugar, as Jake mentioned, is extremely addictive. Um, and so, of course, food manufacturers know that. They want you to continue buying and eating their products. Um, and sugar is cheap, so that is one reason why they'll add sugar. Um, another reason is um, food, manufacturer, food manufacturers tend to um, like to push low-fat products on us. And so when they remove fat from a product, that removes flavor. In order to make that product taste better, they will add sugar to it. So that's a really big thing to watch for. Um, Low-fat products typically aren't a better choice because of that. Um, misleading marketing. Um, this is a big one. Um, kind of goes hand in hand with what I just mentioned with the fat. Um, a lot of times foods are marketed as being really healthy choices. Um, but a lot of times, like I mentioned with like the yogurt and the granola, you know, they might have actually a lot of sugar added to them. Um, and then lastly, of course, sugar is overly accessible. Um, we all know this. We can barely go anywhere without running into a pop machine. We can barely check out anywhere without being bombarded by candy. Um, barely attend a social event without dessert. Um, definitely overly accessible. Um, so. Being aware of your environment and kind of trying to change that um, as much as you can is, is helpful. Uh, but so how badly are we overconsuming? Uh, the U.S. Department of Agriculture estimates that the average American consumes 156 pounds of added sugar per year. The CDC estimates that each of us are consuming 440 calories per day from added sugar alone. Um, so think about those numbers, 156 pounds of added sugar per year and 440 calories per day. Imagine what would happen if you cut, even if you got half of the calories from your diet every single day. Um, there would definitely be some uh, dramatic changes. Okay, so what does all this mean? Um, you know, how does it directly relate to us? How much sugar is too much? Um, Ideally, as far as added sugar is concerned, um, we'd like to aim for zero. Um, but we don't live in a perfect world. And so the American Heart Association has actually recommended an upper limit. Okay, so they recommend that we have no more than nine teaspoons per day for men and six teaspoons per day for women. Um, again, I want to em emphasize that those are teaspoons, not tablespoons. Um, so hopefully some of you are in the habit, hopefully all of you are in the habit of looking at um, food nutrition labels. And if so, you will know that sugar is not listed in teaspoons on a nutrition label. It is listed in grams. Um, so keep in mind then that one teaspoon is four grams of sugar per day. Um, so this means that ideally women should cap their added sugar intake at 25 grams per day, while men should aim to stay below 37 and a half grams per day. Okay, so um, on the next few slides here, we're going to continue to try to put this into a better perspective, show you some examples and break it down a little bit. Um, so we'll start with one of the biggest culprits of added sugar, um, beverages. Um, now it's November, it's starting to cool off. Um, one of the most popular beverages of the season is a pumpkin spice latte. So we pulled the nutritional content of a 16-ounce pumpkin spice latte without any whipped cream um, from one of the most popular coffee shops in the country. 
Um, and so you can see that it contains 12 teaspoons or 48 grams of sugar. So that is double the amount that a woman um, should consume in an entire day just in the one 16-ounce pumpkin spice latte. Um, don't fret. We get it. We like pumpkin spice lattes too. Um, but a, a cool thing about this stuff is that um, with a lot of these products, it's you know we can find ways to kind of healthify things and make some swaps to still enjoy these things that we like, but do so in a healthier way. Um, so if you really like pumpkin spice lattes, but you don't want to consume 48 grams of sugar in one 16 ounce, um, check out our Facebook page. Um, we have a recipe on there from Coach Becca that is like a healthified version of a pumpkin spice latte. Um, next, soda, of course, this one is huge. And um, especially for us health coaches, we hear a lot from a lot of participants. I only have one um, you know, can of soda a day, one a day, isn't that big deal. Um, doesn't seem like a big deal. You know, one a day doesn't sound like much. Um, but again, when we look at that, um, we looked at two leading brands of cola out there, um, and that contains approximately 10 teaspoons or 40 grams of added sugar in that one 12-ounce can. Um, something I like to point out with this, that is more sugar than a Twinkie and a Pop-Tart combined. Okay, so we hope you can justify eating a Pop-Tart and a Twinkie every day for a snack. Um, hopefully, then um, you know you can unjustify having just one 12 ounce can of pop per day. Next, orange juice. Um, this is a great example of something that seems like a healthy choice, but can actually be really high in sugar. Um, so much so that uh, type one diabetics, when they are experiencing a low blood sugar. This will be one of the first things that they'll reach for because it will spike their blood sugar up. Um, so with this, we looked at, uh, an, again, a, a leading brand of orange juice. This is in a 10-ounce, excuse me, an 8-ounce glass, and it's 100% orange juice, no added sugar. Okay, and that still had 22 grams of sugar. Um, so we have a few more things that we want to point out with um, this orange juice example. So Jake is going to dive into that now. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Thank you, Katie Jo. Um, so just a thing uh, Katie Jo said that I, I think is just a scary number to look at. There's 600,000 uh, food items that are available in the general U.S. population when it comes to supermarkets. 80% of those have added sugar. That is a very scary number to say out loud, uh, just to think about that. So when it comes to just what Katie Jo said recommendations on consuming them we really like to hit on the idea of try to stay away from all added sugar because you're probably going to be consuming them when you don't realize it because it is such a such a market there's so much food out there so a big thing fruit juice yeah people want to say okay I should stop drinking soda okay let me let me you know but it's okay because I drink uh, orange juice or I ask participants on the phone do you consume sugar no, I don't. I stay away from sugar. I don't have a sweet tooth. Oh, but I drink orange juice or apple juice or cranberry juice. And we have to intervene a little bit. And this is a good way to imagine drinking orange juice. So, yes, there are some nutrients that are available when it comes to fruit juice. Okay? It, it is natural. There is some stuff there. But there is so much sugar in it that it almost completely makes it irrelevant. Okay? So let's think about this. I like to paint a picture. I'm a picture guy, uh, and hope, hopefully some of you are too. In a glass of orange juice, there's approximately three to five oranges in an eight-ounce glass. Okay? That's just a guess, but let's say there's three to five oranges. If you guys have ever made orange juice, you know that's probably pretty realistic. Okay? I want you to imagine eating three to five oranges. How long would that take you? It's going to take you some time. Would you even, you would probably even feel full. That's because there's a lot of contents in the fruit. How long does it take to drink an 8-ounce glass of orange juice? A matter of seconds? And you're consuming the same amount of sugar that is in 3 to 5 oranges, but in a matter of seconds. Okay? We added a fiber content to this too. 
fiber is very important because it slows down the absorption of sugar in your bloodstream. So think about more of a trickle of glucose entering your bloodstream versus a dumping of it in there where it's just going real crazy. The higher that number is, the more of an effect on your glucose, the more insulin that's released, weight gain, again, fat being released, uh, damage to the blood vessels in your body, just in general, having to work really, really hard. So it is important to, if we're going to consume natural forms of sugar, that we eat it. So I wanted to, hopefully that helps out a little bit. Katie Jo is going to go through uh, marketing when it comes to looking at products. She found a perfect example of, uh, of what companies try to do to trick you. So Katie Jo, explain this slide for us. I will. Thank you, Jake. Um, so there are a few things that we want to point out on this slide. Um, kind of a lot going on here. I um, want to start by saying we are not trying to burn like any one particular brand or type of food even necessarily in particular. Um, this is just a really good example. But so know that this is the case for nearly every item on your grocery shelf, okay, not just this particular bar here. Um, but so like I said, a few things we want to point out here. Um, first thing you may notice when you look at this is that we have highlighted 10 of the ingredients there. Um, we did that because every single one of those 10 ingredients that are highlighted um, is a form of sugar. Um, so you can see just how much sugar is added to this bar. Um, and so keep in mind when you're looking at an ingredient list, um, the, the ingredient that is listed first is heaviest in the product by weight. And so that will continue as the ingredient list goes down. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, you know, if they are adding 10 different types of sweeteners, um, sugar might not be the first ingredient listed, but if you added up all of those um, different types of sweeteners that they use, then it likely would be in a lot of different products. With this one, you can see that um, a, a form of sugar, a sweetener, is the first ingredient. Um, so with that, something else to be mindful of um, you can see that, you know, some of these words highlighted here don't just say sugar. Of course, sugar is in there itself, but there's corn syrup, fructose, all kinds of different things. There are actually 61 different names um, for sugar. So be mindful of that. I encourage you to Google that after the webinar and, um, and look for those things. A um, couple easy ways to spot some. Anything that... Um, to syrup after or anything that ends in OSE is typically or is a sweetener or a type of sugar. Um, so something else to point out, um, you know, getting more into the misleading marketing. This bar is promoted as being a protein bar, but you can see there are six grams of protein and seven grams of sugar. There's actually more sugar than there is protein. Okay, so big take is um, if you want to know the truth about, about the product, look at the back. Look at the nutrition facts and the ingredient list. Do not look at what's on the front of the, the package. To bark at again and one degree seven and a half per man a day. So seven grams of sugar might not seem like a lot compared to those numbers. Um bar is thirty-three grams. Seven out of thirty-three grams. Over twenty percent of the So with that, um, again, biggest takeaway is, is keeping it with, um, look at labels, look at the amount of sugar on this. You might be thinking, no big deal, I'll just switch to artificial sweeteners. Um, Jake's going to talk about why that's probably not such a great idea. All right, perfect. So I know this is a very, very heated topic and probably
a whole webinar talk about the main purpose or the, the main idea. We shouldn't switch to artificial so a link here um, that will be of this webinar. I'm not going to play it now. Uh, try to visualize it again since that's why I like, like to these in these beverages. So there's a lot of calories in. in why sugar is bad? It's actually not. It's how your body reacts to sugar. Okay. Now, typical or popular include uh, artificial sweeteners out there. Now, what happens when you can consume diet sodas right now? Now, I won't say names just in case. But um, as for a name, when you consume it, your brain thinks. It's consuming sugar. So what happens? Okay, your body releases insulin. Your body starts to to uh, it starts to get ready to metabolize sugar. It goes in there to go. So then the body gets confused. The body then says, um, well, I'm not going to react to sugar anymore. So what that means is insulin sensitivity is actually hurt. Insulin sensitivity, going back to the showed us, when that doesn't work, we get high glucose levels, meaning that when we do consume sugar, which as you're aware with our normal population is going to happen, your body doesn't know how to react to it. So this can lead to weight gain. This can lead to damage. This can lead to inflammation. Everything else that we've discussed. Now, there are a couple okay ones as we know of right now. I saw one person that has a question. They talked about honey. Okay? Honey is natural. Honey has a couple of inflammatory properties to it. However, it is still contains a ton of sugar and your body reacts to sugar pretty much the exact same way. So what are a couple okay ones? Stevia. Stevia is a very popular product right now. Stevia has shown to not have this same reaction that aspartame and sucralose has. Okay? So stevia, as long as you get it in the whole leaf form, which can be difficult to get, so you need to look at the ingredients, it can be pretty good. Sugar alcohols. Sugar alcohols like xylitol, erythritol, anything that ends in T-O-L, and on the labels it is it is on the description as a sugar or alcohol. It is on that label. There's been a couple good studies about it showing that it doesn't have that big of a negative effect. However, you need to know sugar alcohols do still contain some calories. Um, they can cause some uh, side effects in the sense of your GI tract. And just side note, uh, sugar alcohols can be extremely poisonous to animals. So if you have some of it, don't leave it laying around, or otherwise it could hurt um, could hurt your pets. All right, where All right. thanks, Jake. Um, so one thing I want to point out. Um, Jake did an awesome job explaining the artificial sweeteners, um, but we do still encourage you to go in and take a look at that video. Um, with the video, it is specific to diet sodas, but it's true of artificial sweeteners in any form, you know, in any food product. So keep that in mind if you go back and check out that video. Um, so just a couple minutes here. I want to wrap up quickly. Um, so what can you do? You know, we don't want to eat all this sugar. We want to stay away from artificial sweeteners. Again, biggest thing, Read nutritional labels and ingredient lists. Know what to watch for. Compare brands um, and try to, you know, buy products that consume or that have the least amount of sugar added to them. Or, better yet, stick to whole natural foods. Foods that do not come in a package, foods that do not need an ingredient list. Things like fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, your main proteins, that sort of thing. If you're currently consuming a lot of sugar, um, it can be really daunting to try to cut back. Like we talked about, it's extremely addictive. Keep in mind that as you cut back, your taste will adjust. 
um, it will eventually get easier and easier. Um, so keep that in mind. You know, stay strong for the first few days or a couple of weeks, um, and it should get easier and easier. That being said, if you do have a craving for something sweet, um, try to um, eat something to satisfy that craving, but in a healthier way. Fruit is a great example. Fruit naturally contains some sugar, but as we've mentioned a couple times, fruit also contains fiber, other vitamins and minerals that are important. Lastly, use healthy alternatives. Um, Dick just discussed, you know, maybe using stevia or sugar, alcohols. Um, another example is maybe using like unsweetened applesauce or smashed banana. In recipes, you can use those um, in a one-to-one -one ratio for sugar. Um, that works really well. Um, so in conclusion here, um, we hope that you have a better understanding that um, sugar is added to nearly everything that comes in a package. It really has a huge impact on our health. And so putting, um, being more aware of what we're eating can put a big dent on our sugar consumption. Um, and so just to wrap up here real quickly, um, one last thing that we want to challenge you to do is to track your food intake on our website, myhealthtech360.com. Go on there, track your food intake, um, ideally always, but at least for a few days, and see how much sugar you're eating. We think you'll be surprised. Um, just a couple additional resources listed here um, if you're interested in more information. Um, we like these. First one is the American Diabetes Association website. That second bullet point set up is a documentary that we um, strongly recommend. It's very good. And that last website um, was created by some health scientists at the University of California, San Francisco, with the goal of taking information out of medical journals and making it available to the public. Um, so I apologize, we went over a couple minutes here. We don't have time for questions. But if you do have questions, get a hold of us. You can call us, you can email us anytime um, on this next slide. We have all of our contact information listed there. Um, we're an available resource year-round. Um, next slide, please, guys. Um, and you can also see our upcoming webinar topics um, next month in December. We will be talking about the benefits on, of unplugging. A really good way to de-stress, which of course is important around the holidays. And then in January, creating a habit, um, how to start the year off right by creating healthy habits to last a lifetime. All right, and Katie Joe, I will stick around. Um, if someone has some questions, we'll look at them now. If you